Hey guys and welcome back to another video. In today's tutorial we're going to be covering a custom menu bar. You guys can see I have my own frame design and I have a menu bar with the word file and edit in there. Now the default uh, menu item or the menu, menu bar, whatever you want to call it, looks kind of crap. That's what it looks like. You guys can see it has like a hover over feature but it looks pretty shit. So we're going to be creating our own which is what I've done and if you guys want to, uh, you know, I've, what I've been doing lately is I've created these project packs I'm not too sure if you guys keep up to date on the website, but if you do, you know what I'm talking about. I provide the download link for exactly what I have right here. And it's exactly where I am. I have these buttons, the code, a little bit of code is in there. So you guys can basically pick up where I start off on this video. So if you just go into my website, technicindustries.com slash downloads at HTML, um, you guys will find my download section. I've got Android apps, custom libraries, and YouTube tutorial resources with three at the moment. But for every tutorial, we'll have a uh, you know project resource so I have a chat app which is coming soon make sure you subscribe for that uh, some after effects stuff and then the menu bar which is what we're working on right now um, it comes with two files the PSD and the NetBeans project which is exactly what I'm working on right now and uh, if you guys want to donate because this does take a lot of time actually because we label everything nicely for you guys uh, compared to how we label stuff for ourselves which is usually just uh, crap one crap two etc so if you guys want to donate like one dollar you guys can um, we also have these Android apps well I create these Android apps for myself I've created an LED flashlight as a 45 minute challenge if you just click on download it's available for Android 2.2 and up uh, this is the page it takes you to you can see what the app looks like it looks pretty good it looks pretty okay you got some battery indicator and stuff so if you guys have a flash on your phone you can download my flashlight app so this is just a quick uh, you know really quick update 45 minute challenge it got some good reviews as well from some of these nice people five stars so if you guys want to download it and just support myself and uh, you know technique industries which is my company then you're more than welcome to do so and everything is appreciated that you guys do for us so let's get back to the tutorial now we have three uh, three resources right here we have the home GUI which is the GUI form the background PNG which is exactly what you're looking at right now and the drop-down box at PNG which has a little screenshot at the bottom uh, it's just got one menu item exit and control Q for a keyboard event if you guys want to add that so let's drag and drop a label because this is what's gonna what's it gonna pop up in and just resize it drag this above your background layer change the variable name to something like uh, drop drop uh, drop drop down drop down box there we go. so drop down box let's actually make this small better Okay, so that's called drop down box. Edit the text, set it to be nothing, and then take a look at the size of our drop down box of PNG 130 by 78. So let's set this label as the same size. So with 138 by 78. And then we're just going to set the icon as drop down box of PNG. And that's what it looks like. You guys can see that the orange border is a bit bigger than a bit bigger than um, the actual squared box, and that's because of this little glow type thing that you guys can see so that's why it's a little bit bigger it looks a little bit bigger but it, uh, I don't know why it's so big actually but that should be fine okay so that's what it looks like just clear the icon I just wanted to show you guys what it'll look like once it actually drops down so no image okay now that we have that sorted out we need to actually make this thing display so I've already added these two labels we're just gonna be working with the file for now if you guys want to add the edit you guys can so let's go into the file events mouse mouse release and we're going to type in a bit of code to actually set this image. So the thing that we need to do is we need to grab our image, which is drop-down box.png, and we need to set it into this uh, into this tree label, which is called drop-down box. So I, I think I already copied it, but just in case, I'm just going to copy that. Now, in order to do this, we need to use image icon, right? So image icon ii, just give it a random variable name, equals new image icon, open close brackets, and then semicolon at the end add the import for java extra swing and then in these brackets for the after the image icon we're going to type in get class open close bracket dot get resource and then it takes a string so in the string you have to type in the picture that you want to load which is called drop down box dot png you have to put the dot png because keep in mind you can have drop down box dot jpeg dot gif dot png so you have to specify which one you want to use which in our case is PNG. So what this bit of code is doing is it's fetching the resource 
called drop down box, which is right here, drop down box to PNG, setting it into this image icon variable called II. Now, once we have that done, we're just going to set drop down box dot set icon. And then in here, we're just going to type in II. And that's how you basically set an image into, uh, you know, whatever you want to set it into by a button click. So now when we launch our program, when you click on the file button, it should display this little thing right here and it does. So that's great. Now the problem with this is that if you had a button right behind it and then drag it below, you should not be able to actually click this button. You guys can see, you can't click the damn button. So the problem here is that firstly our drop down box label is above. Keep in mind that this is a J tree. So if it's on top, if it's higher up on the J tree, it means that it's uh, one layer above whatever else is behind it. So you cannot click it. Basically what I'm clicking right here is not the button. I'm actually clicking the invisible label. Well, it's not invisible, but you just can't see anything in it. So when we bring up the file, now you guys can see a perfect example of what's happening. You guys can see that this J label actually exists over this stupid button. So you cannot click the damn button. You only can click this label. So in order to fix that, because obviously you don't want that to happen in case you have uh, something that needs to be clicked behind there. What we need to do is we need to set this to be false, set the enabled to be false. So we're going to go look for enabled, untick it to be false and then click on close. And now this is basically not enabled. You cannot click anything, nothing will work in here. But just to make sure, we're going to set visible to also be false. So now when we go into our constructor, just type in drop down box, the name of the label, dot set visible and then false. Uh, where did open close come from? Set visible false. So now, oh wait, hang on, let's add the button again. So now let's add our toggle button behind that. So keep in mind the J tree, just take a look at, uh, you know, how I have it organized. You guys can see we can actually click on this J toggle button because right now it's not enabled and it's not visible. So the GY is not actually, it doesn't exist, sort of. You guys can say that. Uh, so you guys can click the button. But when you bring it up, uh, what is going on? Oh, okay. Keep in mind when you click on file, it's still enabled. Um, well, it's still not enabled, still invisible, so nothing will happen when you click the file button. So in order to sort this out, when we click on the file button, we need to set everything to be true. So let's just copy this line here right here because I don't want to type out everything. And then before we load the image into the image icon, we're going to set visible to be true. And we, and okay, just for the purpose of this video, when we click on this, you guys can see it's grayed out because that means it's not enabled. So we also need to say set enabled equals true. So set enabled, and I just copy true. Now you guys will see that it works. Now to prove our concept once again, add our button directly behind that. And what should happen, uh, where did our button go? Oh, hang on a second. We need to move our button there. Now when we run this, you guys can see that we can click on our button, right? Works perfectly fine. And then when you click on the file, it goes over it and you can no longer click the button because now this exists over the button. So yeah, so that's a proof of the concept of what we're trying to do here. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we want to make sure that this can disappear after we click the file button once again. Now, unfortunately, there's no way to magically tell NetBeans to open or close it depending on, you know, what the user sees. So what we have to do is we need to create a variable. So we're going to create a variable called uh, boolean open close. So boolean open underscore close. I know I spelled it wrong. Hang on. Boolean open close. Now if you don't know what boolean does, it basically means true or false. It only takes uh, one of those. So like int goes from negative 32,000 to positive 32,000 or something and double goes to an even higher number. Boolean is just two, uh, true and false. So it helps save memory resources and makes your project a bit faster. So now by default, open close is equal to false. Now I didn't type it's equal to false, but by default, it's automatically equals to false. So if it is false, right? So if open close is equal to false, then we want to, okay, let me just explain this a bit better. So open close is basically means um, is, is this thing here visible or not? So can we see 
that little menu or can we not? Now by default, we can't. So that's why it's equal to false, okay? So if it is equal to false, so we're just gonna type in an if statement. If uh, drop down, no, hang on. If open close, damn it. If open close equals equals false, remember you have to have two equals because we're comparing something. Uh, if you wanted to set open close to be something else, we'll just put in one equals. And we're just gonna put this in these brackets, okay? And then we just neaten it up a little bit. I put the wrong bracket, I know, hang on. There you go. Okay, so if open close is equal to false, which it is, then it's gonna basically show the, the box. So right now, there's nothing different. You guys can see it works exactly the same as how it did before. But once it's opened, we want to tell NetBeans that the box is open. So we're gonna set open close. So open underscore close to true. Now the reason why we're doing that is because by default it's closed uh, or it's not, you know, this thing's not showing. Then when you click on file, it opens up the menu with this four lines of code, these four lines of code. And then once it's open or once it's shown, then we're gonna tell open close is equal to true. So now we're telling NetBeans it's now open. So this bit of code is actually our NetBeans eyes. So it can tell, you know, if it's open or closed um, or whatever. So after this, we can have an else if, okay. And in this else if, we're basically gonna have the same thing, but instead of it being false, damn it, we're gonna make it to be true. So if open closed equals true, it basically means that it's open because it is open, then we want to close it. So what we're going to do is we're gonna copy all this code. Okay. And then we're gonna set everything to be false. So copy paste because I'm a lazy son of a bitch. Oh, what the hell. So open close equals false. And also you do not need this line of code to get the image because we don't need to put an image. We want to set it to be null. So nothing. And now when we run our code, you guys will see it works really, really nicely. And uh, yeah. So now we need to just make this exit button work. And then you guys can add keyboard events and whatever the extras you wanna do. So in order to do that, what we wanna do is, let's just set the icon, right? So we're gonna go set the icon to be drop down box. And you guys can see it's gray because it's not enabled. And we're just gonna drag and drop a label over the exit, you know, the exit button or the exit text. And then just resize it, whatever you want to do. Now this is very important. This J tree is actually extremely important. Most people do not even worry about it. But right now, this uh, label is completely invisible. Everything is above it. So now we need to drag this above the background layer. So it's above the background layer, but you still cannot click it because it's behind this uh, text field. So we need to bring it one above. We need to bring it above the drop down box label so that you can actually click it. So exit out of that and then uh, we get to go now let's just change the variable name to uh, exit button and i'm just going to copy this now we're basically going to take the exact same step we're going to right click on this properties uh, we're going to go to enabled and set enabled to be false right and then we're also going to set visible to be false because i mean you know we we're doing the same thing again so exit button let's set visible false so now that button or yeah, that button. I'm saying button, it's not technically a button, it's like a homemade button. It's You can't see it, it doesn't exist right now. Um, but when you click on file and when it opens up, which means in this bit of code right here, we wanna select, or we wanna set this to be true. So let's just copy this, set this to be true. We're also gonna set enable to be true because remember we set it to be false. Um, so set visible and set enabled. Wow, I'm doing a hell of a lot of copy and pasting. But once again, you guys won't see a difference. It, you won't see a difference at all. And then obviously when you click on it again, you want it to go away and you want it all to be uh, false. So it's the exact same step. I'm not gonna go into too much detail because we're already 15 minutes in the video or 14 and a half, or whatever. But there we go. Now it looks exactly the same. Okay, nothing's really going on, but it's basically behind the scenes action. Now, in order to see this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click on this, properties, and we're going to change the cursor to the hand cursor, okay? To let the user know you can click on it. Now, this is where it comes in, okay? Now, right now, by default, my hand cursor should be showing, right? Because I'm right over this exit button, but it's not actually showing, it's still the hand cursor. But when you click on file, it sets everything enabled, visible, all of that to be true. 
and that means it will now change to the hand cursor because it's enabled and the hand cursor is now enabled so when you click on file again it disappears now once that is done we pretty much done now you can add whatever code you want to add in here so we're just going to type in system.exit which basically means closing your program put this zero and after every line of code press ctrl s never forget that trust me now let's look at our amazing program now i'm clicking where the exit button should be and because it's not enabled we cannot click it it doesn't exist when you click on file now it exists and the cursor changed to a hand which means if you click on it it should close our program and it does you guys can see it works really well and obviously if you guys wanted to you guys can add the same code when you click on um, you know the background or when you click on another item or whatever it may be this is just basically to help set you guys up so I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial if you did please don't forget to give us a like comment subscribe and it was my birthday yesterday so uh, I decided to do this tutorial for you guys I hope you enjoyed it and I have a few more coming up hopefully this week um, next week actually uh, chat app and uh, all that cool stuff so I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys later